Hello reformers and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. Now when we left off we had just tackled a couple of Swadian vassals in an attempt to try and capture them because obviously, you know, letting them go is a pretty good source of honor. So if we want to have a bunch of friends then obviously that's going to make a pretty big difference. As you can see here though, we do actually have a pretty interesting situation. One of the vassals from the Kingdom of Rodox is currently having a big, big problem with two of the vassals from Swadia. So I'm hopeful that I'll be able to get in there. Yes, there we go. Just in time. This is an 82 against 83 troop battle. So this is going to be pretty nice because I don't think we've ever done something like this with the exception of the previous episode where we did have a small bout with one of the Swadian vassals who had about 107 units. And in general, we did win quite handily, but obviously he took out most of our units, most of our really good units. So obviously that's a big problem. I do have a little bit more infantry now, and obviously I've replenished my cavalry ranks. So... I'm going to be telling them to follow me, and hopefully, uh, yes. This is the, this is kind of the annoying thing about native, actually. When you get this many cavalry, or this much cavalry, should I say, then we're obviously going to have a bit of a problem with the orders that our other friends are having. As you can see over there, they are, they're, they're doing okay. They're doing okay because they do have. Well, shall we say, they do have ranged weapons. The Saranid Guards actually do have ranged weapons, which is pretty nice. But, look at this, we're going all the way around them. Oh yeah, there we are. This is exactly what we wanted to see, and hopefully we'll be able to get some nice damage on these guys as well. And I think, actually, that the Saranids, or shall we say, yeah, I think the Saranids, actually, are taking a couple of thieves from the Swadians. They've actually started to sort of branch out now because as you know I was complaining a little bit in previous episodes about the Saranids being a little bit too static, a little bit too stagnant in their area, in the you know, in their territory. Because it seemed like they just weren't bothered. You know, they were just, you know, sort of just standing there, not really doing much. And I'm actually quite pleased to report that they seem to be doing a little bit more now in regards to that. So hopefully we're going to see the Saranid sort of, you know, get involved, get embroiled in other wars because eventually, obviously, we want to be able to eliminate them and actually start using their their units because obviously when we're not using their units, uh, it's kind of uh, yeah, it's a bit it's a bit worrisome actually. I'm a little bit worried what's going to happen when they declare war against us if and when we start our own faction. And, oh yes, there we go. Your help was most welcome. As you can see, we've increased our relation with him by 12, which is absolutely fantastic. And, well, the reason for that is obviously because he was about to be defeated. I mean, literally, very, very close to being defeated. Hopefully, this guy can actually be one of our first vassals, maybe. Not Count Play, but the other one. Maybe he can be one of our first vassals or something if I don't decide to make one of our companions a vassal initially. And I think I actually did do that in the previous original series of Native, made one of our companions a vassal or so on and so forth, and then we started to gain some others. But this is the problem here now that I'm having. I have a lot of income right now. Our revenue is going pretty nicely with the Enterprises. The Enterprises are giving us about, mm, about 1,500 right now, I think. And that's pretty good. That is pretty good. But the, is the honor and the relation with Count Play worth however much we're going to get for the ransom? Well, I, I don't know. Shall we just test it out? Let's just test it out a little bit and see. He has a, a decent, well, personality, I guess. And, well, we're, I guess we're just going to find out whether he repays us in the future. It's It's highly unlikely, isn't it? But we're going to find out anyway. So, yeah, there you go. We could take a little bit of the loot. As you can see here, the Ribulae Castle garrison is very, very weak. Only 169. Suno, however, has a lot more. They have about 340. Probably impossible for us to take that. And, yeah, Dirtios Castle is the only one left around here. The Saranids have taken Reindy Castle from someone, I don't know who. And they've also taken Sunuzg from the Swadians. 
So if we head into our army here, wow, we're actually getting a huge amount of level ups right now, which is quite amazing. And uh, yes, we're going to be speaking to Beheshtur because he has advanced. We're going to give him a little bit more in power strike. You never know, he might get into some melee action. And it seems like Barney has also advanced in level, so this is good. All right, so we finally have, well, six in leadership, actually. I do need to spec into a couple of other things, but obviously I'm putting that on the back burner at the moment, just until we have, mm, yeah, I think maybe the next level we could spec into some other things, like obviously maybe specking into strength, and then we could go for something like power throw or inventory management, or we could go for basically anything. I mean, athletics would probably help. We have zero right now. I can't believe it. Well, I, I kind of can. Barney's a bit fat, so he's obviously going to run a bit slower than normal. But yeah, I did actually get a martial quest, but I decided, hey, you know what? I'm doing something a little bit more important than that. And Nizar has now returned. So who are we going to send off now? Did I already send off Lezalit? No, I haven't sent off Lezalit just yet. So he's going to go off and do his own thing. Artie Mena is probably going to be leaving the party relatively soon. Because obviously he doesn't really like Jeremus that much. And it's kind of hilarious because everyone's leaving because of Jeremus. And I have no idea why. Because he seems like a pretty alright fellow. You know, he doesn't seem like he's too annoying. You know, he doesn't continually babble on about whatever backstory that he may have. But yeah, well... I guess that's just how it goes sometimes, isn't it? And, oh yeah, I think I know what they're annoyed about. I know what the companions are annoyed about. They're annoyed because he doesn't have 10 strength and we have this siege crossbow in our inventory for so long. That's probably the reason, right? Nah, it's probably not. But still, I would very much like him to get 10 strength. Ah, no ransom broker? Are you serious? Okay, well, uh, where could we head to now? Well, this is the thing. I could, uh, yeah, okay, so basically, what we're going to need to do, or should I say, what I'm going to need to do, is wait for some time. I'm going to need to wait for some time, not in this episode, but off screen after this episode has concluded. And probably try to get some kind of progression in the world of Calradia. Because if Calradia does not advance, if it does not progress in any way, shape or form, then I'm obviously going to have to force it to progress. In other words, I'm going to have to do something with Barney and he's going to have to take something or cause war against someone or something. And, you know, we're going to have to go through, shall we say, the motions like that. Because if the Nords are not attacked in any way, then I don't know where we're going to start. Because, well, on the one hand, I would love to be really, really close to the Saranid territory, or in the Saranid territory itself. I mean, maybe it would be a good idea for me to just take one of the Saranid towns. You know, one of the Saranid towns that has been besieged, or maybe one of their newly conquered fiefs, or something along those lines. I mean, that might make a difference, you know, because obviously there's not going to be very many defending it. But then, the problem with that is that we're at war against our own faction, technically. And what's going to happen then is that all of our Saranid units will start to degrade our morale rather significantly, and then they're going to start leaving, and it's going to be absolutely awful. So the one thing that I suppose we could do is we could use a supplementary force just until we have eliminated the Saranids. And what I mean by that is we could use all kinds of different units from different factions. So I'd probably nominate to use... Hmm, against Saranids, what's good? Maybe Nords, maybe Rodox, something like that, because obviously the Mamluks and the various horsemen that the Saranids have, they're pretty good. So maybe we should use Rodox units instead, just while we eliminate the Saranids. That might make the biggest difference. Because then we have spearmen, we have crossbowmen, we don't have any cavalry, however, so I suppose that might be a bit of a thorn in our side. But, hmm, I suppose that might be our only option when it comes down to it. Because, literally, when you think about it, you do not want to have an entire army full of one particular faction's units. You know, when you actually go against them, when you actually try to attack them, then that morale penalty is going to be so great 
that you're just going to continually lose some of your highest tier units. Can you imagine losing 10 Mamluks for nothing? That would be an absolute travesty. So obviously we have to account for that. We have to, you know, formulate a little bit of a strategy and hopefully be able to sort of get get ready for it, I suppose. Because literally, if we decided to attack the Serenids right now, I think we might be okay because we could take one of their outlying castles and then I just have to sort of pray and hope that no one decides to declare war on us with the exception of the Saranids. Obviously that is going to be a pretty luck-based thing. And I'm just going to charge in here because there's, I mean, he, he literally has Swadian recruits and footmen. I really don't need to use any kind of tactic here. Anyway, point is, that's going to be a pretty difficult situation to deal with. With the exception of if we're able to take a castle, because I'm, I'm pretty sure a castle is probably where we're going to start, unless there is a town like Dirim, for example. I actually thought of taking Dirim because apparently there's only 86 in the garrison there. So if we decided to take Dirim, we'd be at war against who now? Is it the Kurgids or the Vagirs? I'm actually unsure who has taken Dirim in the past couple of in-game weeks. So I suppose what we could do is take a look at that after this fight. Obviously it's already finished. Very, very fast. And I'm going to be taking some sharpshooters, sergeants, all kinds of other things. And we can obviously sell those, hopefully. Maybe a Dirim, actually. Maybe a Dirim would be a, a nice idea. Alright, so where is... D yeah, Dirim has been taken by the Kurgids. Oh, that's a bit of a problem. I was hopeful that it was still under control by the Vagirs. I, ha I have a feeling that the Vagirs would have been a better idea. Oh, we've now run into King Harlaus. Well, this is... this is amusing. I'm actually not a big fan of this because I actually saw him before we went into battle, but then I was like, let me just forget about that real quick. Let me just forget about one of the most powerful enemies on the battlefield. Yeah. That's great. That's absolutely great. But yeah, anyway, if we take Durham, then obviously I can place all of my Serenid units in the garrison there while I go and recruit from a variety of different villages, of course. And that might actually work out quite nicely because I think native seems to be quite decent when it comes to recruiting from villages. I know that some mods usually have, you know, oh, there's no one here to recruit and so on and so forth. And sometimes that actually happens. And it's so annoying when that happens because you're wanting to get, you know, a good amount of whoever from that particular village. And then when you finally get there and it's just like, no one is willing to join your party. And it's just, oh, so disappointing. But maybe if we're able to, you know, utilize native's features, because obviously native is a little bit more lenient. You know, it's a little bit more lenient than your average mod. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking that that might be a good idea. Obviously, oh my, wow, there's actually a huge amount of these rather wonderful long polearm wielding fellows here. I'm a little bit worried about this, i got to say. But hopefully our infantry is going to be able to deal with the enemy cavalry because they're fighting all the way over here. Jeremus has already been eliminated. Eh, well, I, I suppose that's just how it goes, isn't it? Okay, can I... Oh, oh my. No. Apparently I can't. Apparently I can't. Well, anyway, Forentis has at least advanced in level. We already eliminated 57 of his army. We only lost six. So technically the only weak link here is Barney. And now Barney's just like, how dare you? How dare you say that to me? And I was, I'm just like, oh yeah, well, it's, it's true, isn't it? <laughs> it's true. I mean, literally. He got himself killed. He got himself killed. It wasn't my fault. I didn't do anything. I'm not controlling him in any way. He's just controlling me with his mind control powers. Obviously, yeah, yeah, obviously I'm just kidding. But point is, yeah. Maybe we would be able to make a good go of things with, you know, taking a weakened town. I think taking a town is quite important as the first base. Because if you don't take a town, then obviously you're going to have nowhere to sell. At the very least until, you know, oh well, should I say, unless you have, you know, n not all of the factions declaring war against you. Because I can imagine that having all the factions declaring war against you would be an absolute terrible, devastating situation to be in, but I think we should be okay in that respect, because I, I don't even know how much right to rule we have at the moment, but maybe we actually have a pretty decent amount by now. I hope that we do. 
at the very least. I'm going to try and keep out of the way a little bit here, because if I get killed again, I will be unable to participate in the next couple of battles, and that's going to be awful. And then I go in and attack someone. Isn't that just like me? Yes, it is. Uh, anyway, we are, we're losing a couple of our slaver chiefs. Okay, well, I'm not a big fan of losing those guys, because they do take a long time to level up. But, well, that is the price that we pay, isn't it? Yes. And they do knock people unconscious extremely effectively, which is really nice to see. Can I kill, can I kill some people in one hit? No, it seems like I need a little bit more in Power Strike to be able to do that, especially to the guys that have a little bit better armor. Can I actually kill that guy now? Thank you very much. Uh, technically, it's not killing him, but still. Ah, oh, well, so this is... Well, how many times has King Harlaus actually lost against us now? I think this is the second time, I think. And the first time, he kind of had our number. So it's pretty nice that we're actually succeeding this time. I'm really surprised, really, that they're not able to deal that much damage, because... As I stated before, my difficulty settings are all the way at the beginning of the series, so if you want to check those out, you can, but... Yeah, I'm playing on normal. Normal modifiers. So, I'm really surprised that we're actually only losing this small amount. But maybe it's just because we have a pretty nice overabundance of cavalry. Obviously, that is making a huge difference to our effectiveness. I think if we were to use infantry only, or archers only, or something like that, we would probably have a much bigger problem on our hands. Because, well, of course... They have Swadian Knights, and if we had archers, those archers would just run us down. Absolutely run us down. And they would not be able to, well, they would not be able to defend themselves against such an overwhelming cavalry force. Alright, so, let's go and take a look at Dirim, shall we? I think it's a good idea to sort of scout it out a little bit, see what's going on there. Ah, there you go. So this is currently what we're gaining in terms of profit. Hilariously enough, I actually thought we were gaining about 1,500 because the time before, the, the week before, which actually happened off screen, I gained about 1,000 and I had just purchased a new Weavery and Dye Works at Ikumur, as you can see here, Ikumur has now you know, it's now starting to give us 612, so that's pretty nice. But, yeah, as you as you can see, you know, it's actually giving us a lot more than that, which is really quite surprising. I was unaware that it would give us so much, but maybe the traders, maybe the caravans, maybe the villagers, maybe they were all unharassed, shall we say, and maybe they made it to their destinations relatively unharmed, and, oh, there we go, okay, <laughs> something else is happening here, yes. The Vagiers are taking Dirim back. It seems like this is a bone of contention between the two factions, hilariously enough. And there you go. They've taken it. So this is actually not bad. Because if we were to... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh no, I did not want to wait for some time. Yes, there we go. Okay, we can just about see King Yaroglek's party. And the reason I wanted to see this is because I wanted to make sure that he doesn't have too many high-tier units. Because if he has high-tier units we may want to reconsider taking Dirim. But as you can see, there's only 86. Well, actually, no, 84. 84 units in the garrison. And he has one Vagir knight. And the, the knights of the Vagirs are not particularly good. They're okay, but they're, you know, they're no Swadian knight or anything like that. And they have five Vagir marksmen. Obviously, one is unconscious at the moment, but yeah, they have five Vagir marksmen. He does have a large amount of Vagia veterans and uh, Vagia archers, which are obviously going to cause us a bit of grief. But for the most part, his army does not seem that daunting. So I think we could, in theory, take Dirim. And that might be a nice idea. So I'm going to see what happens with the garrison here. I think we have to act relatively fast. But what I'm first going to gonna actually do is go into the guild... Oh, wait a minute. We've already bought a die works here. Oh, never mind. Okay, apparently I don't even need to do that. So, yeah, it seems like I'm just going to need to level up a couple of our companions. We have five more Serenid Mamluks. Obviously, we're losing a couple of those every single fight anyway, because they have the most risk. You know, they charge in and do their best, and they're very, very brave about it. But I think we're probably going to be pretty close to creating our own faction, but it really depends on what happens next, when I'm off screen, that is. And, well, 
maybe we can give it a go. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.